Okay, it is time to multiply some radicals. I will be using the distributive property and then I will be foiling and then I will even do special cases such as conjugate pairs. Let's go. First example. Square root of 7 times 2 minus square root of 5. In this problem, I have to distribute the square root of 7 through to both terms inside the parentheses. Square root of 7 times 2 is 2 square root of 7. Remember, numbers outside a radical cannot multiply with numbers under a radical. Now, square root of 7 times that square root of 5 gives me a negative square root of 35. Now, there's no perfect squares that are factors of these numbers, so that is my final answer. Next example. Square root of 2 times square root of x plus 3 square root of 2's. Y'all, once again, I need to distribute this square root of 2 through to both of these. Okay? So, square root of 2 times square root of x is square root of 2x. Square root of 2 times 3 square root of 2's gives me 3 because 1 times 3 is 3 and those are my outside numbers. But under the radical, 2 times 2 gives me 4. Well, guess what? I can't do nothing with the square root of 2x, but this 3 is going to get multiplied by 2 since the square root of 4 is 2. Now, last step is to multiply. So, square root of 2x stays the same, but now I got 3 times 2, which is 6. Unlike terms, so final answer. All right, a little four of them. I'm going to have 2 plus square root of 3. I'm going to multiply that by 3 minus square root of 5. Okay, foil. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times a negative square root of 5 is a negative 2 square root of 5. Now, I got to take the square root of 3 times both of these. Square root of 3 times 3 is just 3 square root of 3's. Remember, don't get the numbers outside under a radical with those numbers. If it's outside, it stays outside. If it's inside, it stays inside. And then finally, Square root of 3 times a negative square root of 5 gives me a negative square root of 15. Alright, y'all notice, none of these are like terms, so that is my final answer. Alright, next example. I'm going to do 5 minus the square root of 7 times 5 plus square root of 7. Y'all, these are called conjugate pairs. That means that everything is the same except the operation. One's being subtracted, one's being added. But notice the 5's are same in sign, and then I have the square root of 7's. Now, watch what happens when I multiply conjugate pairs. 5 times 5 is 25. 
5 times square root of 7 is 5 square root of 7. Negative square root of 7 times 5 is a negative 5 square root of 7. And then finally, negative times positive square root of 7 times square root of 7 is just a negative 7. Remember, radical times itself gives me that number. But what I want you to notice about the conjugate pairs, look what happens to these radicals. One's positive 5, one's negative 5. The radicals match up, so these cancel each other out. Now, my other like terms are my numbers. 25 minus 7 gives me 18. Now, that's the thing I want you to realize about the conjugate pairs. The middle terms always cancel, and in the final answer, there's no radical. And that's what's special about conjugate pairs. You always get rid of that radical. All right, so I hope this has helped you out. You just got to remember, when you multiply the radicals, you got to do the outside times the outside, and then the underneath times the underneath. And remember, conjugate pairs are special because when I multiply conjugate pairs, I always get rid of the middle terms, which contain those radicals, and I end up with a single number. Until next time, goodbye.